da, da. Literally, the minute I hit the start button, I yawn. See, I'm telling you, it's a it's a Pavlovian response. It really is unbelievable, but it definitely is that. There's no doubt that's what it is. Ah, uh, boy, I tell you. Well, we're gonna be doing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm 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 kind of thinking about. Um, we're gonna do a couple things because this might be a slightly longer than usual stream. I think I may have to take a little break in it. I mean, I'm not. It's not gonna be four hours or anything. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I don't wanna set up unrealistic expectations. So this isn't gonna be a 17 hour stream or anything like that. But I just mean that usually it's around 40 minutes. I think it's gonna be a little bit. I'm sorry about the yawn. I mean, I've I, I just I don't know. Whatever. So it probably will be a little longer than usual. And you know, so, but again, it's not going to be two hours long, and I will have to take a break to feed my little pup. And uh, yeah, so okay. Da -da 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 -da. So I'm just putting this on the dying social platform Twitter, which is oh boy, it, it's it really half the reason I go on Twitter now, and I'm not even kidding about this really, is that ugh, sorry is that uh, to block ads <laughs> I actually get a kick out of that because I, I don't think it's going to matter to uh, Mr. Musk at all but it does give me a bit of satisfaction to block what few advertisers see. and they're, most of them are terrible they're most mostly terrible ads anyway so it's not as if they're really all that good I can't even pretend they are they were actually relevant or decent ads. I might say something about it, but they're not. They're pretty much junk. Which still does bother me. You know, I, I, it just sucks to, to see the continued degradation of Twitter. Okay, I have posted everywhere that needs to be posted that I can think of. So now I can put my phone down. And let me move my stuff in a position here. I'm going to move this. That's my keyboard. I'm moving that up. Okay. Uh, I may take a look at some reference stuff because I had somebody that sent me a message asking about a commission on um, my artist proofs for elementals, a, dip, a diptych with elementals. Now, I'll be honest. As I've said, I really don't know anything about Magic the Game, so I don't really know what elementals are. I did a brief search, and they're kind of monsters of as you would expect, elements, water, fire, air, earth, that type of thing. But there doesn't appear to be any... Sorry, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what this is. But it is absolutely now a, a automatic response to streaming, which really sucks. Totally psychological, without a doubt. I mean, I don't even have to think about it, but that's what it is. Anyway, so I may do some kind of rough blocking sketches. I don't know if that's at all interesting to people, but just of, of what that, a diptych like that would look like, because I really don't know. So the, the idea would be a, a single background of some kind, and then these two elemental spiting. So I don't know if I want to do like a beach scene where there's a water elemental that's kind of manifesting out of the water, fighting an earth elemental that's like the trees, you know, something like that. I could do something like that. Um, it's always tough to try to figure out what's going to work at scale. But anyway, all right, let's 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 jump over to this. So we'll do our little transitional thing here. And luckily now this doesn't loop, so this is a lot easier to move from one to the other. But before we get to the sketch thing, I do want to finish this. I want to actually finish this piece. Or at least get the coloring done. I don't know that I'm going to do a lot more line work on this. I kind of like this simple, or at least I think I do. We're going to see what it looks like once there's some real colors in here. Because I've only just started on the color work so let's geez I didn't I didn't actually consider the fact that I made the orb red and it's gonna have red blood on it so maybe the orb shouldn't be red <laughs> maybe that's a bad color for that orb because there's gonna be red over it I don't know we'll have to see but I have a feeling it's gonna look weird or not ideal I guess would be the easiest way to say it I don't think I was really thinking about this when I did the colors um, yeah, I think I want to change that. It's a nice color. I like that red, but it doesn't... It's not going to bring out the... Uh, oh, I was, I was holding the wrong thing. 
Ooh, that's not a bad color either. It's nice, kind of like a deep teal. That's not bad. I mean, I could go with a purple. I could make it a purple orb. That would bring out the reds too. Well, let's see. What the teal look like? No. Well, you know what? I kind of like that. I don't get to do teal much. It's just not a color you don't see that you see very often anymore, which is a shame because it's a great color. I understand, though, it's kind of a uh, an old color or a dated color, but that's... I don't care about that. I like it anyway. I just realized that it doesn't really... The eye blood doesn't really make sense the way it's currently set up. Uh, sorry. I, I really... I don't know what to do. Are you on automatically now? It's just the way it is. All right, so what I want to do is let's bump this up to maybe eight. Yeah, eight seems a little large let's try there we go okay so we'll because the blood has to be coming from somewhere you know can't just come from nothing i mean it could but that's not really how i do things so i'd rather it look like it's actually generated from the eyes somehow what it is and why it is is a completely separate thing but we'll have it welling out that doesn't really matter. Oh, wait, what layer am I on? Ugh, of course, I'm on the red layer. I knew it. I knew it before I started. I went, before I even checked, I went, you're on the wrong layer, aren't you there, dummy? And I was on the wrong layer. So let's see. I mean, this, none of this is getting changed, so I probably can start solidifying some of these layers here. I can merge now. Let's bump that up. Okay, let's try this again, except without the stupidity. All right, so we're just gonna do this. All right, now let's do it. Let's do it well instead of just doing. It. Jeez, you know what? I'm starting too low. Why do that to myself? Really, when it's not necessary. Okay, there we go. And we'll do one over here, and we'll just start it where it's not gonna interfere with those other lines. Cause really, what's the difference? It doesn't actually have any impact on the image. So I'm not going to work. Oh, that's a big eraser. Let's go a little bit different down. There we go. All right. Now we've given our blood a source in terms of where the lines are. I mean, I could have had it just dripping down, but then where would the red stop? You know, it's not, not good. Not the way I choose to do things. So we won't do it that way. Okay. God, that really... There we go. Better. Well, that still seems... <sighs> Sorry. Yeah. It still seems like a small brush for this. Let me bump this up to, say, five. Yeah, that's better. That's better. And I probably could put it behind the... Nah, that's fine where it is. I'll leave the orb in the background. Whoops. Well, not like that, though. Yep. So, here we are in the middle of the week. Starting to get hot in Northern California anyway. Our air conditioner went on the fritz last weekend, which was, sorry if I bumped the mic there, not fun for the three days where it was over 100. I mean, it, it never got dangerous inside the house, but it got pretty warm. Fortunately, we've identified the problem, and it is not an overly expensive fix. It's not cheap, but it's not a total AC unit replacement, which would be a lot of money. A lot of money for us. Maybe not a lot of money for somebody else, but a lot of money for us. Fortunately, it is a more minor thing. And the evaporator unit, or coils, I should say, that, that whole solid unit had uh, what appeared to be a number of leaks in it. And because of that, the refrigerant had gotten to an extremely low level, and that's what caused the ACE unit to not work properly. Now, fortunately, very fortunately, it was, again, not a total replacement, which is what I was kind of dreading because depending on the age of the unit, they don't refill them. They don't use the same refrigerant anymore. And so what they do is tell you you need a new AC unit. I'm getting a drink really quick in the background, by the way. Don't want you to think I disappeared. So that was actually what I was kind of... I was gearing up for the guy to say, yep, your unit is shot, and you're going to need a new one. And that would have been bad. There's something on... You can't see it, but there's something on my monitor. Let me just get this off. It's probably a piece of eraser from my uh, 
That's what it looks like. Oh, geez, that's really on there. What the hell is that? Sorry. Just gotta work this off. There we go. I think it was a piece of gummy eraser. That's what it felt like. Because when I'm doing my normal cards, I use a gummy eraser. Although it's not really good for erasing, but I, that's what I've got. So I have not found a really good eraser solution for those card backs that doesn't end up pulling some of the ink off. Not, not a big deal. I end up just going back in and re-inking it, but um, it's not great. So anyway, I was dreading this, the technician to come in and say, yeah, you're going to need an, an entirely new unit. Because that's an expensive thing to do. If you've never had to replace an AC unit, yeah, it's not cheap. Now, it's not that we couldn't have afforded to do it, but it would have been a bit of a, a, bit of a uh, it would have been a bit of a punch Let's put it that way. But what? But there's the other thing. Is, I mean, you can't not have AC. At least not in Northern California, you can't. Not, not with the way it's been for the last few years. I mean, we got a bit of a break, honestly, in this because, oh, I don't know, I want to say three, four years ago, it was 100 plus for over, I think it was 10 days. Now, if the AC goes with that, not only are you in danger from the heat, but you're unlikely to be able to get replacement parts because everybody who's having an AC unit is going to be calling everybody and you got to hope that maybe you can get somebody to even come out and do something. You know? So we were very lucky because this was a very, it was a very short hot snap where it was basically three days. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was not fun, like I said, but if this had been in the middle of a 10 day thing, who knows if somebody could even have gotten out here. And then we had to wait for, you know, so they were able to refill the refrigerant, which is good. That's great. Because I was actually afraid the guy wasn't, well, number one, the AC unit, if they'd had to replace it, they wouldn't have been able to refill the refrigerant. So we'd be, because today's 96 or 8, we'd be in this heat without AC, which would not be fun. And honestly, I'm not so worried about myself, although I am miserable when I'm, when I'm in the heat. I, I am not a heat person. I will take cold every single time without even thinking about it. But I was more worried about uh, my dog, even my wife. My wife doesn't mind heat as much as I do. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. She didn't like it either, but she was okay. But my dog, we were, we were, I was paying close attention to her on the one day because she was panting pretty heavy. So I put some ice into a bucket and ran it over or a fan over it and that helped cool her down. But still, I'm sitting here going, man, if, if this had, if the AC unit had outright died, we, we might've, I mean, we probably would have just gone to a hotel or whatever we would have figured something out because we would not have stayed in here and it was only really three bad days so again we get we got really lucky uh, which is not the case for everybody and that it was not a total ac unit replacement because that would have just been uh, not even the cost which uh, not fun you know you don't you don't ever want to lay out major money for anything if you don't have to it's always better to it's always better to have money on hand then you have to spend money you have on hand. That's just a general rule in, in, at least in this country. But I don't even know if they would have been able to do a total AC replacement quickly. We lucked out. They found the EVAP unit was pretty quick, and that took a week or just under a week. It'll be six days before they could have somebody out here. And again, this this could have happened. This, we, we might have gotten through this three days, and then we got into a real long streak of hot weather, and then it went, and again, everybody's going to be calling at that time. So, so when they do this replacement, I am going to have the, the tech who comes out also do the normal kind of yearly maintenance that we do on it, just to make sure, because I don't want to take no chances. So, but yeah, boy, whew. Not not fun. I, and I mean, the, the difference in when this guy was filling the thing. I mean, you because the air was running. I could feel the air cooling off and getting cold. Oh, what a glorious feeling. It wasn't hot air, because that's usually the sign that you are in real trouble, is that your, your unit is blowing hot air. That usually means the leak is severe and could be so bad that you know it may be in other parts or something or that the unit is actually shot but ours was not hot air it just wasn't cold enough air to keep up with the the hot air so it was one of those things where you know you'd run it all night 
and wake up and you're like, okay, yeah, this is not going to keep up. And sure enough, you'd wash the thermostat and the thermostat would just keep climbing. So, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds, obviously. I'm not a fortune teller or anything, but it sure doesn't seem like it's going to be getting cooler as time goes on. So I know there are parts of the world where air conditioning is not something most people have. The UK, I think, is one where you don't usually find a lot of air conditioning. And I think that's going to change. I think, you know, places that used to just be fine without it are not going to be fine without it anymore. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that... Who knows, 10, 20, 30 years down the line. I don't know what the world's going to look like in terms of the weather and the climate. You know, because yeah, we just don't seem to be doing anything about it. And I'm not somebody who's a... What's the word for it? I'm not, you know, a lunatic about environmental stuff. I, I, I you know, people will suggest... I don't know, I think it was Sheryl Crow, the singer at one point, was saying that everybody should be... Uh, what was it? Uh, swapping out toilet paper for reusable hemp somethings. And I'm sitting here going, yeah, that that's never going to happen. I mean, that's just that's just you're you're off your rocker if you think that that's going to have any kind of widespread adoption. What are you kidding? Come on, that's that's just not ever going to happen. I mean, you know, sure, in a perfect world, it might make sense to do something like that but we don't live in that world but we also don't even do the bare minimum on stuff i mean we don't do anything and and i i don't i don't really get it like, you know I, i'm gonna get on some kind of because now of course everything's political but there's a point where you sit here and go okay because there's people who just get very upset when you talk about climate change at all no matter what term you use global warming climate change whatever that are like, human beings are not to blame for what's going on here. And they're right in that certainly I think it's unlikely that human beings alone are responsible for what's going on. I don't think that human beings are the beginning, middle, and end, the totality of, of what's happening with the climate. But you, you do have to sit there and common sense would dictate just a little bit that we are one of the dominant species on this planet nowhere near the top I mean there's far more insects than, than there are us but insects do not generate pollution on the scale that we do they don't do things like I don't know dump chemicals in the environment I mean animal or insects animals they're part of the natural world, and so there are natural checks and balances, natural barriers. There are things that nature does to contain creatures and, and other things from getting out of control. That's one of the reasons that forests, you know, they talk about uh, beneficial burns. That you want to have forest fires every so often in a, in a certain way because it keeps it from going out of whack. You, you stop the, the ecosystem from going out of balance. Well... You know, we, we changed that when we moved into places and stopped burning things and started developing things. And so, like so much else in the world, it's it's not the human beings are the sole cause of almost anything. There's a type of arrogance, that, that level of thinking, too, where I sit there and go, wow, we really... Some people really think they are that important to the universe when generally you're not. But to, to not acknowledge and want to modify human behavior in some way to, to just to recognize that there is an impact. And I don't know what that percentage is. You know, I, I, there's differing. You know, are we responsible for 50% of the CO2 emissions? Are we responsible for 10%? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a scientist in that way where I can break out a sheet of numbers and tell you where we are. But I think, I, I, and I don't really know that it matters. I don't think it really matters what percentage humans are because we know that there's, well, I shouldn't say we know. We don't know anything. Of course, you know, there, there could be an alien landing that comes next month from Martians and they'll come and tell us how to fix our environment. That could happen. I can't rule it out. Nothing's impossible. Well, very few things are impossible. But 
barring that type of event and that level of an intervention of some kind, it sure looks like, from what most of the leading scientists who look at these things project, that we're going to be in trouble pretty soon. That the planet is warming to an extent that if something is not done, then human beings are going to be having a hard time with it. Not the plan. This is, you know, the idea that we're saving the planet. We're not saving the planet. George Carlin said it best. The planet is fine. The people are in trouble. He didn't use the words in trouble. He used a different word, which I will not use here because I do try to keep this stream. I mean, I know I'm drawing blood coming out of a skull, but it is this. My stream, I believe, is PG-13. I, mean, I feel pretty confident saying it's a PG-13 channel. I barely ever swear it. If I do, it's generally a slip. And, you know, this this may for some people be adult gra uh, subject matter, but I don't really think it is. I mean, it's just a skull bleeding. It's not like there's any innards coming out or anything where I could be like, oh, yeah, that was a little much. Where, where was I going with that? Why was I talking about an adult channel? Jeez, where was I going with that? There was the environment, and then I got into... I don't even know how I got to this. How did I get to this? Jeez, I don't remember. But anyway, I, I think it's... Oh, it was the George Carlin and the, the language he used, and that was adult language. I got it. I, I figured it out right as I was about to abandon the, the search in my mind for what this was. I found it. So it seems like there is a high likelihood that human beings will be negatively impacted by what's going on with the, the planet's climate and temperature and everything else. But nobody seems to want to have to do anything about it. Nobody wants to... I mean, it's kind of like a lot of things. I am sorry, by the way, because this does feel like it's like a bit of a... Not necessarily political soapbox. I don't know if that's really fair. But it... it, it there are frustrations of mine that veer into the political, so I apologize if... You know, if that happens. But at the same time, I, it's just on my mind. I can't help it, really. But I feel like the a lot of the stuff around the climate is very similar to a lot. I'll 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 make it general this way, is similar to the way that it feels like a lot of other problems in at least the United States. Can't speak to other countries. Don't live there. But here, a lot of other things, issues and struggles and tensions that are going on here is that nobody wants to have any type of accountability in it. They don't want it. They don't. Nobody wants to pay for anything. They don't want it to affect them. They don't want to see it. They don't want to know about it. They just want it to get solved, though. They just want somebody to go solve it, but they don't want to be anywhere near whatever that potential solution could be. It's a very American trait. Is, yeah, well, yeah, we got to do something, but I don't want to have to pay anything for it, and I shouldn't have to do anything. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I don't, you know, don't want to paint myself as somehow better. I always say that. It's not like I'm saying I'm not guilty of the same thing. I certainly am. But like, you know, I, I do typically point out, at least I'm aware of it. I think a lot of people are not aware of it. Uh, hold on, I gotta condense some layers here. Well, those layers can be together. Those are detail layers. What's this? I'll leave those separate. The this can go with this. Pew, pew. These are just detail lines, so it's fine. As are those. But that's you know one of these things where I look around and I'm like, oh okay, well, you know you you can you can only not be part of something for so long before you are part of it. You just don't realize it. But you you are part of it. You, you intentionally sitting out on the sidelines does not suddenly make it that you're not involved with it at all. It just doesn't. And I don't know what the solution to that is. I really don't. I just I look around and I see people who less and less want to care about anybody that isn't themselves. Again, a very human trait. I won't pretend that I never have those moments, but I try to at least be aware of them and try to combat them in some way. But without that, without people deciding that it's worth caring about somebody besides themselves, yeah, that's all doomed, I think. Which, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, don't mean, I don't mean to have people come here and have it be gloom and doom. I really don't. But at the same time, that's how it feels a lot of the 
time lately is okay. You know, so I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know how I got on to that from. How did I get on to that from drawing stuff? Because I was talking about the elementals and Magic the Gathering, and then. I don't remember. Oh, because I was talking about the air conditioning unit. And that kind of led into the idea that it's going to be warmer and warmer and warmer all the time. That's how it happened. So, yeah, let's let's swivel it around to something positive. So, tomorrow, our air conditioning is going to get fixed. Yay! Hooray! That's great. So, hot weekend, last weekend. But we should, assuming there are no problems, which you never know, but I'm assuming... Assuming there are no issues, we should be back to fully operational AC tomorrow. Should be. Barring any weird issues, which hopefully there won't be any. Okay, let's do... I'm going to probably end up lightening these colors. I feel like they're a little, a little dark. A little dark for what I want it to be. I think it is not a problem that's the nice part about having the adjustment sliders is that you can take this stuff and adjust it hence the word sliders following the word adjustment okay let's clean these up a little bit do some cleaning here there we go got a little bit right there okay Good on that. Oh, no, we're not. we got to finish that out. Also, I started watching the newest Transformers movie, The Rise, Rise of the Beasts, I guess. So far, not bad. About halfway through it. Not bad. I mean, certainly way better than any of the, the Michael Bay stuff, which I have not enjoyed. I liked Bumblebee. That's kind of why I watched this one, because I saw a lot of comparisons with Bumblebee in terms of, okay, you know, this is a fun movie. It's not a, not necessarily a great movie, but a fun movie. And I'm okay with movies being fun. They don't all have to be works of high art or anything like that. I, I, although I have been having quite a what's the word for it? A variety of films lately. I'm gonna grab another drink really quick here. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, because I watched that. I watched two of the Apocalypse Tetralogy by... I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it. It's Polish. Is it Piotr or Piotr? Or is it just Peter? That's, I guess that's Americanized as Peter. But I'll just... Peter Zul Zulkin would be how I would say it, which is probably incorrect. So sorry about that. Not meaning to be disrespectful to anyone from Poland. That's just my terrible American coming through. But uh, I watched Gollum from 1980, and I watched uh, War of the Worlds Next Century, which chronologically is the next one. They're not really, there's no real sequel to it in terms of, they're not like direct sequels. He uses so many of the same actors, which is a pretty common thing, but they're not playing the same characters as far as I can tell. But I quite liked War of the Worlds Next Century. Interesting movie, definitely an art house type film, arty type thing, where you have to kind of consider what the ending means, which I know for some people is instant pass. Well, if it if that is your, if that is something you don't want to engage with, then that is not the movie for you. Whoa, whoa look at that. What do we do here? Let's see. Let's find those lines. Knowing my luck, they're going to be on the same plane, but we'll see. Oh, no, they're not. They're not. I think we're good here. Where is it, though? There they are. Now we caught a break. Not bad. Okay. But I do need to... I want to fix these lines. Um, is it this one or is it this one? That one. Let's just put some lines in here, because I just like the idea that this seals off. So, Oh, not with that pen, though. Uh, so War of the Worlds Next Century, definitely more of a Lynchian type film than Gollum was. Gollum has what I think is a, to me, is a pretty, you know, it, it's got an ending that you can understand. War of the Worlds Next Century is definitely one that's more open to interpretation. I mean, 
Gollum had a little bit of that, but not as much as War of the Worlds Next Century does. Whoa, boy, some people... If you don't like your endings to be vague, you would hate that movie. Or not even... I don't know, vague is the wrong word for it, I guess, but where you don't really know what you're supposed to be taking from what the movie shows you. At least, I'm still kind of going back and forth on it. But it's definitely, at least the first two, have some very specific critiques of the way media is used in totalitarian or tyrannical regimes. I mean, these movies were made when Poland was still a communist country under communist control, and it's pretty clear that there's components of that in there. I mean, I think they're I think they're excellently done, but again, I recognize that they these may not be films for everybody because they do have at least some level of demand on the viewer to bring something to them. Like you, you especially War of the Worlds Next Century. That movie ends in a way that for a casual viewer will be extraordinarily confusing. They won't know what that's supposed to be. And I don't know that there is a clear answer. I feel like I know what I thought of it. But it's definitely one of those, okay, there's some there's a there's wiggle room here to try to figure out what this movie is saying. And it's not for everybody. Perfectly fine. Not everybody has to be in art films. I quite am. I like them. I think when they're done well, it's it's interesting to consider what what a movie's message is beyond what the filmmaker intends. I mean, there, there's something really fascinating about that to me. Is okay, you know, the the filmmaker absolutely has, I'm sure, in their head what the movie is about. But the viewer gets to then completely throw that out. You as a viewer can come into a movie and if the director says, well, the movie's about this, you can watch that movie and say, yeah, I don't think it is. And your interpretation is every bit as valid as the filmmaker's is. That's amazing. I mean, that's great. I mean, all visual arts have that capability. You know, somebody might look at this and say that, you know, this image is a, I don't know, ah, what's the looniest thing you could, that this message, that this, that this image is an implicit argument on the continuation of hand-drawn animation at Disney Studios. Now it isn't. I'm telling you, it's not. I, I literally just generated that out of words in my skull. Aha, uh -huh, skull. But if somebody interprets it that way, I can't tell them not to. I can't go into their... I can't climb into their head and say, nope, you are not allowed to think about my artwork this way. No, that's not what it is. I can change the work. If I wanted to explicitly write on it, this is not about Disney animation, well, I'm free to do that as the artist. But it still doesn't necessarily override the interpretation of the viewer. That's what I love so much about art. It's so wild. It's so wild to think that this is one of these, you know, I, I guess music is similar. I was going to say it's, it's a rare art form, but yeah, I guess all, all art is that way. Writing, geez, that's a good question. Writing can be open to interpretation. Yeah, no, it can. So I, every, every creative medium has this, this power or this potential, I should say. It's a better way to put it. I think that's great. I love it. I think that's such a, a wild thing is to, to, to consider that artwork can be so subjective and two people can literally look at the same thing and not see the same thing even though they are literally looking at the same thing except they're not because their life experience their preconceived conceptions of of what a piece of artwork is even based on the title i mean there are many famous examples where Artwork is titled in a way that is supposed to be confrontational and strange and doesn't line up with what you're being shown. For example, if you see somebody who's painted, I don't know, a giant sea serpent cons consuming a, a ship full of people and the, the thing is titled A Fun Day at the Beach, you know, stuff like that. So I, I, I love all that stuff. Honestly, that's one of the, because I know lots of people talk about the fact that social media is basically worthless and to some degree I know what they mean but it isn't to me 
because it allows me to go out and find artists and appreciate them and try to signal boost them as much as I possibly can, which isn't going to be much because I don't have much reach at all. I'm not, I'm not an influencer, so I can't really do much to help anybody besides appreciating their work, which is not nothing. I, I kind of assume that most artists are like me where you sit there and go, wow, somebody likes my work. Well, that's, that's amazing. So I try to, when I see good work, I try to not just, because, you know, a lot of platforms, I'm sorry, I really hit into the mic there. Sorry about that. That was an accident. A lot of platforms just encourage you to like or re repost or retweet or whatever. But I always try to write something unless, you know, the, the appreciation is of a written work. Well, then I don't have to write anything. I mean, I guess I could write something, but... I typically don't. All right, let's see. Um, we need a a lighter color, so let's bump let's bump this up. Let's put a thing right there. And let's go to brightness, and let's lighten that up by say five. Oh, there it is. Couldn't see it for a minute. Um. Pull the saturation down quite a bit though. Maybe 30, 20, maybe 25. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let's grab that. Okay, and here we go. Oh yeah, that'll work. And this will be our, our highlighting color. Yeah. But yes, I, I do enjoy films that are interpretive that way. But I also enjoy films like uh, Rise of the Beasts. Although I I all right, let's let's talk Transformers for a bit, shall we? Now, it only shows one person is watching. I don't know if this one person knows much about Transformers, at least the old stuff. But of course, I grew up with Transformers because I'm horrifically old. Well, not horrifically, but I'm getting there. I grew up with Transformers. Why is there a white box? There? Oh, it's that. That was for the, uh, what do you call it? I don't need that anymore. So growing up with Transformers, I remember the Transformers animated film. As most people my age do, remember it as a excellent and emotional film because, and I hate to spoil this for somebody if you don't know the movie, but it is a movie that is now, I don't even know, 30 years. It may not, it might be just short of 30 years old. I think maybe it was 85, but I honestly don't remember. It doesn't really matter. In any event, in the film, Optimus Prime, leader of the Autobots, is killed in what is a very, very stunning scene because Optimus Prime essentially is the Transformers for, for all intents and purposes. I mean, he's not literally the Transformers, but he is so synonymous with the Autobots and the, the good Transformers, to use that phrase, that his death, I think, took most people, literally was shocking to most people because... He had been a mainstay character for so long. I mean, Optimus Prime is just one of those foundational characters that you associate with the Transformers. I mean, most people know, if they know anything about Transformers, what a lot of people know is the truck. You know, it's like, he's the truck, and then uh, Megatron is the handgun, which is always ridiculous when you actually think of the concept of the fact that Megatron transforms from this huge robot into a tiny little handgun. It's ridiculous, really. But that's the point. I mean, it's not supposed to be not supposed to be high drama or high high art of any kind. But in any event, in the animated film, Optimus Prime is slain, and the Matrix of Leadership, which is this magic thing that's in his chest, is passed to Rodimus Prime, and Rodimus becomes the new Prime. So then he is the leader of the Autobots for, I don't think Optimus, if I haven't watched the movie in quite a while, but I don't believe that Optimus comes back in the film. I think he stayed dead for a little while, even in the cartoon that followed and everything else, because they were, they were making Rodimus Prime the big deal. So Optimus, unlike a lot of media, did not just immediately spring back to life, you know, at the very end of the film. He was dead for a while, even inside the mainstream uh, cartoons, which is really something. 
because again, that this is the face of the franchise. In some ways, it parallels the the death of Iron Man in uh, what do you call it? Endgame, right? That was the one. So there's sort of a similarity to that, but you know, this was in a time where that type of thing didn't really happen. What, what are those two dots doing there? Those have got to go. I don't know what those are from, but I guarantee they weren't on purpose. I would not have just put two dots by themselves. Yeah, you can tell from what layer they're on. That's not that was an accident. So yeah, Optimus Prime has this big death scene, which I'm sure for young kids was probably pretty traumatizing because they'd grown up with Optimus and and he I mean he dies. It's not he not doesn't go into hibernation or something. He's dead. And again, as a kid, you watch that and it's like, whoa, man. Killed Optimus Prime. Yeah, because he takes a Megatron, which mortally wounds him. And then I think the removal of the Matrix, I think the Matrix of Leadership was the thing keeping him even barely alive. But of course, as most good heroic characters, he knows that, you know, there needs to be a new leader because he's his time is over. Of course, it wasn't really over. They just brought him back later. And so Rodimus ascends to fight the Scourge of Unicron. A giant, very clearly not ripped off at all version of Galactus. The the Autobot or the Transformers edition of Galactus, which is what it most certainly is. And Unicron goes around and eats planets. And in the cartoon is famously voiced by Orson Welles, which is a pretty good casting decision. Megatron is con is converted into Galvatron who is then Unicron's kind of the essentially the Silver Surfer to Unicron that Silver Surfer was to Galactus. And then the rest of the movie is pretty much what you would think it is. All the Transformers have to fight him, blah, 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 blah. And, it's, uh, dun, 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 and that's the movie. So there was a very quick synopsis. So, you know, when I went to watch the, the new Transformers, I, I watched the first one and I don't, remember hating it but I certainly didn't care much about it it didn't really land with me all that much because um, it just didn't seem like even the same stuff and I blame a lot of that on the the art decision as far as how the robots were depicted and all the rest of it I mean they just didn't even look you know they were smart enough to get the voices for the 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 characters to be the in many cases original voices but that really doesn't matter if they don't seem like the same characters and they really just didn't it's just such a eesh. I'm not a Michael Bay fan it's as simple as that uh, I think he made uh, let's see I, I, I do like The Rock I like The Rock that's a good movie Michael uh, Bad Boys is fine did he make anything else that I like I don't think he did I think that's it. I think it's The Rock and, and uh, Bad Boys. And Bad Boys, honestly, I have no desire to rewatch it. I just remember being like, oh, okay, that was a fun movie. But it's not a movie I would even think. It's one of those movies where it's not that I dislike it. It just never occurs to me to watch it, which is in some ways as bad as not liking something. So... Uh, where are we time-wise? Okay, what I'm going to do, because we're at the 45-minute mark here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break for a little bit. And uh, go feed my dog and just take a break from this. So what I'm going to do is... I don't think... I don't think I'm going to... I don't think I'm going to pause it. Because it's going to be a little bit. I mean, I'm going to take good 15 20 minutes or so feed the dog and just kind of take a break from this so i don't want to i don't want to necessarily pause it uh because you know i don't want to just have a blank stream just running so i think i'll stop this and i'll come back and do probably a shorter stream but a second one um so yeah i think that's what i'm going to do so whoever's viewing because it shows one viewer so assuming that's real and not some kind of bot thing I'm not trying to insult you if you're a real person. That's that's not what I mean. I just, I never know because I know there's bots on so many things. So I don't know if there's bots that are just going around. Although I would think if it was, it would be generating some kind of spam messaging. 
saying, oh, you can buy seeds in gold here. Click here. Click, 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 click here. So I don't really think it's, if it is a bot, I don't know what the point of it is because it's not one that I bought. So I don't know why somebody would randomly send a bot to my channel. So I'm assuming that's a real person. So real person, whatever your name is, I'm going to take a break and come back at, uh, well, I'm going to come back in about 20 minutes. So it'll be half past whatever the time is for you now. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'll finish this off. And then I have another piece that I'm going to be working on a joke piece really, but not a, a kind of a joke piece, joke piece and not joke piece. So yeah. So, yeah, let me do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just, because and also my iPad's getting a little hot, so I'm going to let it take a break. So I'm going to switch to that. I think now that teal color, while I really like it, I think it's actually too, I think it's too subtle of a color. Yeah, I just bumped it up by about 10%, and it's way better. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with some neon -y colors with this thing. Definitely. Okay, let's see where we are. Yeah, I'll give another minute or two. I don't expect anybody else to show up. I think it's, you know, I see one person has come back. I assume it's the same person who was here earlier. And I'm assuming that's all it's going to be, which is fine. So I'm not going to wait five minutes. I'll get going in a second here. And, uh, yeah. Yep. In fact, let, why wait? Let's go. All right, here we go. This again. I'll probably cut all this out when I merge the videos, and that's fine. I could just act like we're jumping right back in. And... Okay. Well, a massive short amount of time ago, which if you're watching this after the fact will have been not at all ago, I was doing this, and then I took a short break. So now I'm back, and I want to finish this off. And I did change this color. This was a lot darker. The orb was a lot darker. And this is one of the benefits of stepping away from something and coming back. When I looked at, when I came back, I could tell, I don't know how I didn't miss this, or how I missed this the first time. It was far too dark. You could barely even make any of the lines on it, so I had to lighten that up. And that's all I did in the interim between the video stopping and restarting, was lighten that up. Um, so we're going to finish this off, and then I'm going to start working on what is both a joke image, but not a joke image. And I'll explain what it is before I get to it, just while I'm doing this, because this is kind of mindless stuff in the background here. So there's a channel that I follow called Digital Foundry. It's a group of uh, people who do video game analysis. So they basically go through and they look at new and old games and they examine the technology behind it. Very, very deep level stuff in many cases far beyond what most ordinary people who play video games would ever care about. You know, frame rates and render technology and why things work the way they do. You know, including doing things like frame rate analysis and, and examining the core technologies underneath things. Anyway, I've been a fan of theirs for a long time. I've been a supporter of them for, uh, geez, I don't know now. I mean, that had to have started during the pandemic. I think is when I found them. So now it's going on three years, four years, something like that. And uh, no, well, it wouldn't have been four years if it was during the pandemic because that was, well, no, I guess it's going to be close. So it's more than two years. I'll say it like that. And uh, nice guys. I've had several of them on my uh, podcast that I've talked to. John Linneman and uh, Audie Sorley at the time was a member of the team. And he's still a contributor, but he was a more kind of direct member of the team. He's now part of Limited Run Games, who recently had a showcase on some stuff they have, they have coming up there. And I think he really, really enjoys that work because he's getting to work on a lot of stuff that he's talked about. So anyway, nice guys. Uh, so I've, um, like I said, I've supported them for a while. And... They do a weekly series of shows, video podcasts. I mean, there's an audio component, but it's you know, it's main. I think it's I think it's geared as a video podcast, really, because there's I suppose there's really no difference in listening to it, except you wouldn't see some of the screenshots. And with video games, that's kind of important. But in any event, they do the the weekly. It's called the DF Direct or Digital Foundry Direct, which they're yeah, they passed uh, episode 100 a little while ago, so they've been doing it for a little while now. 
and oh no, I'm sorry, it wasn't a DF Direct. My mistake. It was a special. One of their one of their regular episodes was about a wrestling game called. I want to say it's AEW Elite. I could have that name wrong. And as part of that, one of the team members, Alex Battaglia, who is, he generally looks at the frame rate stuff and PC settings. He's kind of the PC centric, not the only one, but he tends to be more PC centric with a lot of his analysis and uh, things that he talks about, you know, why, why games have stutter and why game, you know, how ray tracing is implemented, that kind of thing. But he did a bit as part of that wrestling because it was structured as kind of, you know, they were doing the wrestler announcing voices and, you know, uh, people were playing characters, that type of thing. And he was the, I think his character was the PC police because he was talking about the PC settings for the game and that type of thing. It was very funny because he was wearing a, a police hat and, you know, a aviator type or, sun, you know, police sunglasses, whatever those are called. Aviators are, I think, the reflective ones. These were the, the ones where the lenses were black. And anyway, it was a very funny bit where he was doing a kind of Sergeant Slaughter-ish impression voice thing. And, you know, I instantly thought the visual of that would be very funny because a lot of people who are part of the Digital Foundry community, they want new merchandise from the group. And they just, I mean, it's just not a, I think the DF people would like to have merchandise as well, but it's just one of those things where it's it's not something that is a high priority for them because they have to get so much. I, I actually, the way that they, the amount of stuff they have to pump out, you know, it's, it's man, I, I could not do video content creation the way a lot of people do. It's just, it's just, it doesn't ever feel like there's really ever a break from it and you can never get ahead of it. It's crazy. But anyway, so merchandise is one of those things that I think is always on the horizon for them and they just haven't really been able to carve out the time to really do it and figure out how it would be done. But I thought right away when I saw this, when I saw Alex doing this PC police character, I went, oh, that's a, that's a shirt. That's, that's the kind of image you'd have on a shirt with his face as, as this, you know, cartoonized as this character. And, you know, so I'm going to, that's the joke image I'm talking about. I mean, I'm going to take it seriously. I'm going to do it just like I do most stuff. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, oh, well, I just realized, oh, whatever. You know what? It really doesn't matter. In this case, there's space between these images. I was, I realized I didn't separate the, the teal and the pinks correctly. It doesn't matter. I don't think in this case it matters. Um, I'll, I'll fix it, of course, but it's it's honestly not a big deal in this case because they're not overlapping. And since they're, you know, it's just color stuff, this should be easy. It'll be very, very easy to fix that. In fact, I'll do it right now. Might as well just do it. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to... Tell me, did I hit the limit again? Ay, ay. Okay, hold on. Uh, let's see. That's fine. I just got to... We're gonna move this down because this is only gonna be for a second anyway. There we go. All right, so I gotta duplicate this layer. I'm gonna turn this layer and this layer off, and all I'm gonna do on this layer is get the eraser, max that out, and I'm gonna erase everything that isn't the orb very quickly with a gigantic eraser. Then I'm going to flip the orb off, go back to here, and now I'm going to erase just the orb, just like that. All right. So now I can go ahead and merge that down, restore that, and there I fixed my problem. Drop my eraser down because I will forget that. I'll have a huge eraser at some point. Okay, back to it. Very easy to solve that problem. Okay, so what? Wait a minute. Where did the? Oh, I know what I did. I know what I did. I, I, my fault. I have to turn the visibility of this on before I merge it down. Otherwise, that's a one weird thing. Is I don't know really know why it does that, but. I'm sure there is a reason why you would, why an empty layer wouldn't simply reactivate when you merge it down, but that's okay. It's, it's done. It's, that was an easy thing to fix. I knew exactly what I did. That's just a quirk of Procreate. A weird one for sure, but I know what it is at least. I know what it is. As long as I know why something's happening, I can counteract it. Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll start. Probably not going to stream for more than about 40 minutes this time. 
I'll take a break because uh, the iPad does tend to heat up. Even though I gave it a 20 minute break, that's it will still heat up pretty quickly once you've been using it for a while. About the only bad thing about it is that it heats up. Um, which I noticed because I use my finger for a lot of the painting. I don't use the Apple Pencil for it because a lot of my painting, digital painting, doesn't really require me to have any type of pressure sensitivity. I barely even use pressure sensitivity with the Apple Pencil, to be honest, because I just don't do a lot of things where pressure sensitivity matters. At least not often. I do, just not very often. So it's it's one of those things that people love about the Apple Pencil. I barely ever use it, but that's just my use case. So anyway, I think that that image, once I have it really where I want it, because I have an idea in my head where it's going to be. It'll be his face as the, the PC police officer. There's going to be explosions, because in the video he had all these explosions going off when he was talking. So there'll be big explosions in the background and a couple of video cards, because he was talking about, you know, he was holding, at one point he held up a video card. So stuff like that. Just something kind of silly and fun that would easily be throwable onto a T-shirt. I love this. I tell. I, I think I've said this on streams before. I love designing images that can go on a T-shirt, on a coffee mug. I absolutely love it. Okay, I'm gonna leave this for now. I'm not necessarily saying this is done like this, but I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna come back to it because I want to figure out if I want to do more with this and what it's gonna be. So I'm gonna leave that for now, and uh, let me do a quick switch to this. And let me move over to, oh, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Jeez, why did I do that? Come back. All right, so this is the image I'm talking about. And I don't have the, the image I was, based, uh, I was basing it off of was in the video, so I don't have it here. But this is basically the, the image. So you can see it's basically, it's a police officer. Except I have to put the badge in, but I'll do that later. It's no problem. Um, and I took these color things are just approximations of his skin tones. Uh, may, may or may not stick with those. But what I'll start with here is let's turn off the... So let's start, let's group these as a, um, as the sketch layer, because that's pretty much where I want it to be. Okay, definitely need a different pen. That's probably good. No, actually, I can go a little smaller. Let's go to size five. Yeah, okay, there. All right, so let's turn on the assist, because these are going to be essentially the same shape. Let's start doing this. So you can see what I mean. I'm going to have, you know, so the plan will be there will be explosions in the background like that, and, you know, like stuff going off. And then I think I'm going to have a couple of graphics cards like that, you know, with the fans. So that's the plan. I mean, I got that stuff I got all pencil in. But for now, I just want to get his, you know, the main image done. Uh, you know what? Let me put a, I'm going to put a, uh, a white layer in here because this has actually worked out pretty well for me doing something like this, and then just drop the opacity down. Let's switch back to black. Boom. Okay. I hope I turned the assist on. I did. Amazing I was that smart to turn the old assist on. So I'm actually very much looking forward to doing this one. This should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of fun if it comes out the way I want it to. <laughs> That's always the caveat is if I can get it to look how I want it to look. If I can't, it won't be as much fun for me anyway. You know, and it's one of those things that artists, this is a constant thing. Is somebody, somebody else will look at this and be like, wow, that looks amazing. And I'll be like, yeah, but there's this, 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 and this wrong with it. I'll be like, yeah, I can't see that though. You know, it's just, that's just a normal artist thing. Anybody who does creative stuff generally runs into some variation in that. Yeah, that's okay. I don't care. I'll, I'll get that to work. There we go. I'm not too worried that these are not exactly straight or anything. I just want to make sure that they're like that. All right. Image has started. Off to a good start. Because it doesn't look too bad. I can turn those swatches off for now. Let's go to drawing assist here. All right, all right. And let's see. Okay, so we'll round this like that and we'll bring it down. Okay. And then we'll 
bring this like this. Okay. And we'll bring this around. And we'll bring this up like that. Bear with me a second. I just have to check one thing. Very quickly on my phone, just to make sure I had it on silent. So I just want to make sure I didn't miss any message from my wife or anything like that. Just double checking. I don't think I did, but okay, nothing. Just making sure. Just wanted to double check. Okay. So let's see. I didn't think I did because I'm pretty sure the way my stuff is set, a message from her would have come through anyway, but. I never entirely trust those things. I'm always like, eh, it's never a bad idea to double check. Don't become too reliant on a piece of technology to do something for you. Make sure that you do something important, that you double check it yourself. Not that I distrust technology. I don't, I love technology, but I think it's, it is always good to make sure that something is working the way you think it is. Okay, we've got the glasses done. Uh, let's go ahead and do the, the, what do you call, whatever this thing is, whatever this thing here is, let's just go ahead and do a straight line across on that, Oof, why does it have that stupid thing there, hey, there we go, oh yeah, we're good there, and then we'll just do a, fl oh, pff, I forgot about that, do a flat bar going across. No, not like that, though. Not with an angle. Not with an angle. Why is it doing that? Well, you know why? Because you're not... No, well, I'd started it too far at that time. Hold on. There we are. Yep, I can live with that. Let's do this. Okay. And we'll do this. And I forgot got to put here but I remember the glasses had nose pads so we'll just add those because it's easy for me to just do that then we'll do this have that going back behind the ears okay let's go ahead and just clean oh, okay I gotta switch that there we go let's clean that up yep let's clean that up Yep, let's clean that up. And, oh, missed those. We'll clean that, and we'll clean that. And then we can go ahead and merge these layers together, because there's really no reason not to now that they're done. There we go, our glasses are done. Let's see, okay, facial. Let's do the facial stuff. So let's try to do this in one shot, shall we? Oh, let's to switch to the actual pen. Okay, well, that's not gonna work, so we gotta, okay, that's not gonna work. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, well, I shouldn't have angled it that much, though. That's okay, we can do this. It'll be fine. Okay, well, not like that. Do this, there we go, that's it, that's it. We got it, we got it. We got it, okay. And then here, I'll just go ahead and erase a lot of this. And I'll get that line to be a little bit straighter. There we are. Oh, man, that was actually a pretty good line. Pretty good line right there. Now, what I can do, I mean, there's really just no reasoning. Well, I shouldn't. Oh, yeah, I'll do the nose. Let me do the nose. Okay, so let's do the nose. So we'll just do this like that and sweep down ooh nice actually now it's a little bit of a sharp nose a little too sharp on the nose but we'll fix that better small difference but it it, it is it's important all right let's get the lips now we'll come up and we'll sweep in okay and then we'll do the bottom lip. And we'll just have that come straight across, more or less. Oh, it might be a little high up. Let's let's do it on the lower end of that lip. There we are. OK. 
Okay. Um, we'll do the nose. Like that. Okay. I'm trying to look at stuff that's symmetrical and what's not, because not everything on this is going to be... Not, I'm not going to be able to do drawing assist for everything. So... Down for the neck part. <sighs> Lost it at the end. I had it up to that point. Let's do it this way. This is actually easier anyway. Okay, and then we'll just get rid of that blotchy bit and we'll just bring it in like that. And let's, I missed a small little sliver of that. There we go. Let's do the hat. So we'll do that. I'm doing this more as a continuous thing, not really caring. Okay. Here we go. We'll fix that. I don't like how that looks at all. But that's easy to fix. Just have to, there we go. All right, so we've got the hat done, because the hat is symmetrical. These, I don't even know what to call these hat buttons. There we are. Those are done. Those are symmetrical as well. Where are we time wise? Oh, we're okay. We're okay. So, yeah, okay. Okay, let's, you know, I don't know if I. Yeah, let's just use them. Let's just make these even. Wait, did I do it on the same layer? I did not. Okay, good. Just checking. Just had to make sure. Oops. No, 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 it's not a hidden layer. Oh, I didn't clear it, that's why. I did turn it back off. Technically, that was a hidden layer. You are correct there, appropriate. That was a hidden layer. You're right. Okay, stop there. I'll fix those. Okay. Because those are always tricky to get right. These, these middle lines. I mean, they always end up arcing when I do them. So I want to try to get them correct. So let's do it this way. Okay, there we are. Well, this one was actually pretty good. That's a rarity. Usually I don't have them that good. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's do another layer. And let's do an assist on that one. And this will be the... Whatever this thing is called on the officer's hat that sticks out like the brim I don't know whatever it's called the shade oops sorry I didn't mean to I know I bumped the mic just there so that was probably loud sorry about that was not intentional okay there we are yep okay we'll do the hair because that I made that basically even. So we'll just do this. I don't really care if this is the same on both sides. This is not, not a vital part of the image, really. Not a vital part that has to be, you know, different. Okay. And we'll do that. There we are. Perfect. All right. This is its own layer, yes? It is. Let's go ahead and just do this. Of course. Right at the end, I botched it. That's okay, though. No problem. Not a problem. Wait, is that the same layer? I don't think it is, but I'm just checking. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. All right. Right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's go ahead and get the ears in. One. We'll go ahead and do this. That. And let's get this one in there. And let's draw that across. And let's bring that up again. Not. I don't have to worry about the ears and stuff being really detailed. That's not going to matter as much. It just isn't going to matter as much. Just do this K. 
carefully. There we are. Okay, we can go ahead and erase that. Perfect. Okay, can turn the symmetry back off, or the assist back off, I should say. Um, oh, you know what? I will turn it back on for one thing. Turn it back on for the sunglass glare. Oops. Okay. Yeah, very comic booky effect doing that. Very, very comic book type thing. I'll probably do something else inside those glasses, but for now, that's fine. Some kind of like bubble glare. I'm gonna, go, you know, I'll admit, I'm gonna go look at kind of like 80s comics and look at some of the way they did the sunglasses that was really kind of gaudy and very specific to the age, and I'll probably imitate something like that. I think it would look funny on something like this. Okay. I just think it would look funny. Okay. And let's erase that. Okay, let's take a look. So on the glasses, now I should turn the assist off because these aren't going to be the same. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of what goes behind the ear there. We'll get rid of what goes behind the ear on that. And let's clean up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the, the lines on these for now. And then I think I'll bring this stream to a close pretty soon. Um, that would go over the hair. So that goes like that. And like I said, this was going to be a shorter stream, but I'm actually very happy with the fact that I have this going like this. Okay, let's get the hair out of there. I'm going to clean it up. Clean the hair up. I mean, most of this stuff is symmetrical, but not everything is, so I do want to make sure that's okay. Let's see. That I don't accidentally erase something I shouldn't. Where is the hat? There it is. Clean that up right there. Shoot over to here. We'll clean that up. Okay, let's see. Is that that? It is. Okay. I don't mind doing these individually, even though they were originally symmetrical. That's perfectly fine. Oh, and where's the chin at? There's the chin. Now that should be fine to erase symmetrically because it's the same on both sides. Yeah, oh, the hat, the hat's still, where's the hat? There it is, oh no, where's the hat? Hold on, there it is. Turn the assist off, because the ears are different, so I don't want that to erase unevenly. Or I'm just going to have to redraw it anyway. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now you know what I'll do. Since I'm right here, why not? Let's let's get the top lip done, too. There we go. We'll just very quickly erase that. And then we can do... Let's do the teeth. Just because it's easy to do while I'm right here. Now I've got to turn the assist off for this. And just do this as a center point line. Not worrying about that being perfectly even. In terms of the cam uh, the, the composition. Uh, oops. Ah, just shave the top, man. There we go. Okay. So this is a good start. Good start indeed. All right. Okay. Perfect. All right, let's switch back to here. Yeah, I think that's going to do it. Cuz like I said, I knew this was going to be a shorter stream, so but that's that's <laughs> that's going to be good once it's done. I don't know that I'm going to do that image entirely uh stream-wise. I probably will not. Uh, but I will. I may check back in on a on another stream with it so that you can see where it is. But yeah, now I have to charge my iPad because it's pretty low. Well, it wasn't a 
continuous long stream, but it was about, what did I do the first time? About 45 minutes or so? 45 to an hour? I don't remember exactly. And then a 30-minute stream. So, so more than usual for Wednesday evening because I happen to have the time for it. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Good. And the thing didn't crash, amazingly. Nothing froze up. Pardon me, I almost burped out of the mic, but because I drank a bunch of water. So that's good. So actually, another reason to quit while I'm ahead, because things were actually working. So I'm going to get out now before I jinx it. So thank you for stopping by if you did live. If you're watching this after the fact, perfectly fine too. I really don't care when people watch my stuff. I say this every time. But on the off chance there's a new viewer, you've stumbled across this because YouTube's algorithm has somehow thrown it in front of you. Because I don't think anybody understands how that thing works. Uh, yeah, watching it live... I typically do them on Wednesdays. I suppose I should say that in, in these things, but I don't. But in any event, it really doesn't matter. You can watch it after the fact. I don't care. So anyway, thank you for stopping by. If you can, go out and be creative yourself. Otherwise, watch another video like this, something that invigorates you with, with creativity because I think it's good for the mind, the body, and the soul. So thanks for stopping by. We'll see you on the next stream, and take care.